Hey, how's it going guys? So Parcel.js has been around for a little while now, but if you haven't heard of it, it's basically just a super fast zero configuration front end build tool. If you're like me and you just wanna get something working, but still have all the fancy features such as uh, view single file components or JSX or TypeScript or SAS or any other random NPM module, if you still want that stuff in your front end project, then Parcel is actually a really good build tool and it's currently my go-to. Also, if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I make plenty of front-end projects, tutorials, and a lot of things on my channel are about JavaScript. So now let me show you how easy it is to build something with Parcel. I'll also be leaving a link below if you want to check out the Parcel documentation. Okay, so getting us started here, I've got a empty directory opened inside VS Code. So let's begin by going inside the terminal and typing out npm init-y to create a new Node.js project. So now we can simply install parcel. Uh, we can just say npm install dash dash save dev for development dependency, then specify parcel as the package name. So now, uh, once Parcel installs, uh, we're going to be taking a look at an example uh, of building an HTML file. Now, this might take some time, but trust me, it's worth it. Okay, so now Parcel has been installed. And like I said, I want to show you a simple example of a build. Now, it's only going to involve HTML and CSS for now, but later on in the video, I'm going to be showing you some JavaScript and of course, including uh, NPM modules. So let's make a new directory here called SRC, short for source, then make a new file called index.html, okay? We can now include an HTML5 template and change the title to be something like test project, then put something like uh, hello inside the body. Now, we can also create a new uh, CSS directory inside the source and make a new file called main.css. And this CSS file is simply gonna change the background color of the body. So we'll say body and make this something like background then cyan. So now we can include this CSS file inside the uh, head by saying link to CSS going to of course CSS then main.css. So now if I save this here, we can now instruct parcel to build this uh, HTML file and its CSS dependency. So heading inside the package.json, let's replace the default test script with a start script. So this is now gonna say simply parcel, then you're gonna point to your HTML entry point. So we'll say here, src forward slash index.html. So now this parcel command is going to start a new development server with support for automatic reloading when you make changes to the code. So if I drop down here, I can now run npn start. And as we can see, got the server running on localhost at port 1234 and all the code has been built. So now, if I go to this in the browser, we get hello right there with the cyan background, okay? So that's how that works. Now, I'm also able to change the text to be something like by and even change the CSS to be something like us, to like a green background, right? Go back in the browser and we get those changes instantly. Okay, so that's a very nice feature. And of course it only took uh, 24 milliseconds to make that recent change. So very fast indeed. Now let's make it a bit more interesting and let's make this CSS file now a SAS file. Okay, so let's make this now a main.scss instead and then update the HTML reference to be of course main.scss. So now parcel is gonna do its thing and install its own uh, you know, SAS uh, transformer. So now if I go inside the main.scss, we can simply declare a SAS variable for background, something like us, make it yellow. Then of course, reference it in the background here. And if I save this and go back in the browser, we get that change instantly. And SAS was that easy to get up and running. Okay, so going back inside the text editor, let's have a look at this dist directory right here. So this right here is your built code, okay? So if you're using some sort of like web server or public facing 
you know, website, make sure you include or, uh, you know, map your public route to this disk directory here. Because of course, you want your users to be using your built code and not your source code. Okay, so we can now move on to some JavaScript examples and of course, uh, installing the Lodash package and making it work on the front end. Okay, so let's go inside the source directory, make a new folder called JS and of course a new file inside here called main.js. So now let's reference this JavaScript file inside the HTML inside the head and just say script source going to, of course, JS then main.js and make sure you specify the type of module. This will automatically uh, defer, which is gonna save you some trouble. And it's also going to allow you to have maximum support, um, you know, when you're using parcel. So once you're done there, the JS file is now included in your dist. So now, Let's go in the terminal and create a, sorry, in, you know, um, a new terminal and let's just install the Lodash package. So we can say npm install dash dash save dash dev. Then we can of course say Lodash right here. So now it's going to install Lodash and we can use it inside the main.js right up here. We can say import uh, underscore from then of course Lodash right here and we're good to go, which means I can now say something like, uh, you know, console.log, then say, you know, underscore dot concat and pass in here uh, my two arrays, something like, uh, you know, 10, 15 and 20, then something like, you know, 40, okay? I can now save this and go back inside the browser, open the console up and just do a quick refresh and we get here the concatenated array. So as we can see, Lodash is working perfectly fine in the browser and it took uh, it took 119 milliseconds for this to work. Of course, now if I was to make a change and you know something like 60, it's gonna take even less time. We get 38 right there. And of course, it's still working in the browser. So that is a quick example of using Parcel to create your, uh, to, you know, to create a front end project. And there we go. That is how easy it is to create a front end project using Parcel. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something, of course. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.